Perspective. perspective and here at his and her perspective we find common ground to harmonize relationships and we do that by having the conversations that we're going to have today today we're going to talk about is the price of commitment too high i mean like does it cost much we're going to talk about it right yeah. and listen brother how you doing i'm solid i'm solid all is well, all is well. i haven't you? seen you in two weeks Nice little hiatus for us, you know. We I missed need, you a little bit. Much needed break. We work hard. Put yourself in the middle of your camera. Yeah. Put yourself in the middle. There you go. There you go. Okay. You no, know, my head kind of weird. I get the leaning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you get a year older, because your birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Family, very much. help me wish my co-host Vaughn the Love Alchemist happy birthday. Y'all tell him happy birthday, y'all. Step on in yeah, and yeah, let yeah. us know. Sing so, me a song. Sing me a song. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. Happy. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, nah, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. Okay. I'm, <coughs> you know, don't you know y'all y'all wanna y'all wanna hire me? I'm on the books. Let me know if y'all need me for birthday parties. I do bar mitzvahs. I do um, all of that. Oh, yep. Man, Baby showers, weddings. Yeah, I'm good. Y'all just, you know, 1-800-HIRE-ME. I'm here. <laughs> listen. So listen, y'all. If y'all are looking. Hey, Desi. Hey, Desi. Hey, Sister Niece. How you doing over there? Lovely, beautiful self. Listen, y'all, if y'all looking at us, say hello. How are you? We want to know who you are, where you're tapping in from. And if you are regular of us, just say, hey, family, we know who you are and where y'all coming from. But if you're new and you're looking at us, let us know who you are and where you are tapping in from, because we'd like to know how many people we are connecting with. Next, we want you to make sure that you are commenting sharing something, right? Saying something and subscribing to all of our channels. Make sure that you go over to Vonda Love Alchemist page on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as our His and Her Perspective show over at YouTube. Make sure you reach out with the girl at Coach Michelle Monet on all social media platforms, except for Twitter. I'm a little shy, Twitter shy, right? So don't look for me on Twitter. I probably got like 12 followers over there. Don't worry about that. Got more in other places, but you know, I'm a little popular someplace else. Don't worry about that though, okay? <laughs> Listen, we are gonna have an amazing conversation. But before we do that, let's get into the couples that are winning because we need to talk about that. We need to make sure that we're uplifting couples that are winning. Um, so if you know a couple that you want to have highlighted, reach out to your bro, your, your boy, uh, Vaughn the Love Activist, so that he can reach out to you and find out all your stuff. You know, inbox him and then we'll get that going because this is his segment, right? And then we are, uh, we'll get you highlighted um, because we really want people to know black love is still cool, right? It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's right. So let's share the screen. This is the couple that we are talking about this week. Who is this, Vaughn? These are these are my good friends, Bruce and Aisha Styles, the Styles family. Um, I met them, man, it's been probably five, six years now. They are a handsome couple. Yeah, good looking people, good, good spirited people, man. Yeah. It, it's a good heart, just a good couple, good people to know. And um, they've been together. They've been married for seven years. Wow. Have four children. And yes. um, I, look, I, I love this couple because they I, I, I don't want to sound repetitive, but this couple makes love look seamless. Yeah. I mean, the chemistry that they have, the synergy. I mean, like, you know, a lot of people, they take really <laughs> good pictures. But the but behind the pictures, behind the scenes, they're going through hell. Yeah, yeah. 
But, but you can kind of see that if you're a seer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this couple, I mean, you know, we've spent a lot of time at each other's houses. I mean, we've we've done a lot together, and um, they they it's as good as it it's as good as advertised with them. And and uh, so salute to Bruce and Aisha. Y'all make love look good. Y'all make black love look real good. And yeah. uh, I appreciate y'all. Congratulations to y'all for seven years. Y'all got past that seven year itch and keep on moving because we need couples, more couples like you guys. I love it because they are beautiful. I mean, you could see the synergy between the two of them, even in the picture. So that was a great, I love that. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing, brother. What's so listen, sure? I want to go into this news and we're going to let me stop sharing that screen. And then, um, because this news that I was like shocked about, right? So, oh, where'd it go? Oh, they just, they just took my stuff? Lord have mercy, no. Let me see here. Um, it is, well, let me see if I can bring it up again. I don't know why it's acting funny. I guess because it, it is funny. It is. It is, it is. it's like, really, are y'all doing this? I mean, it literally won't come up. Anyway, okay. Listen, y'all just gonna take my word for it because I can't get the thing to show the the title. But uh, well, I can. Well, it's not gonna show anything. So Massachusetts has begin is now the second city to recognize state polyamorous. Hmm. State. State. I'm sorry. The second state. Sorry. Uh, no, it says second city, second, no, second, no, I'm sorry, Massachusetts state, but there's a second city within Massachusetts that has recognized polyamorous relationships. So you could go to court and say that you're married to two people in Massachusetts. For those who want to do that, you might want to move there. What do you I think about that? I don't like that. Why? Because I think that I don't like the whole thing, right? I'm a little selfish. I, I need my stuff to myself. I don't play well in the play box. We ain't playing sand toys together. These are my toys. You have yours. We ain't gonna do that. So I personally am against it. That's just my IMO. Um, and um, I think that nobody wins in that except for the person that's got the two. Okay. okay. So, so did it specify whether um, the man could have two women, or the wife can have, or the woman can have two men? Is there any specificity in the argue in the article at it all? It just says they uh, they uh, moved a requirement that those in a domestic partnership. Uh, hold on. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about, uh, wait, hold on. Once the, once the law and culture says that the male-female aspect of marriage violates justice, because I can't show you the picture, which is pointless if you can't see all the words either, um, violates justice and equality, we have expanded marriage. So fundamentally redefined what it is, and those redefinitions have no principal stopping point. So they don't say if it's just the man uh, having two women or... I mean, I don't care if it's a woman with two men. I still think that somebody loses out. Okay. You know, so I'm not even just talking about a guy with two women. I just think that somebody is not going to get the attention that they, that they, you know, are due, if you will, for lack of better terms, because marriage in itself is, is work. Now you working with two, you got three, three, four time jobs, pretty much. Mm -hmm. and you got children. What are you doing? You know, I, I, first of all, I, I promote one man, one woman, right? But I do, what I can appreciate about it is um, people who are living in their own truth. There are some people who feel like they cannot be resigned to just one woman or one man. They feel like they have to have multiples. And right. So, for those people who feel like they have to live that way, just to the point in the show, um, the title today, if, if they're willing to make that type of commitment, then again, I, I can understand for people who feel like they have a- Sorry, I was trying to do a watch party. 
for, for people who feel like they have a larger appetite or a greater capacity or whatever realm you want to put that in. Like I said, it's not my cup of tea, but you know, to each other. And own. I know, I know a guy uh as a friend of mine, our birthdays are literally three days apart. And um he is like, I'm like, so what's going on with you when you get married? He's like, man, if I can find a woman that'll let me love two women, then I would, I would get married. And I'm like, why are you being greedy? <laughs> You know, and he's like, because I just feel like I can love two women. And I'm like thinking, like, do you have that much stamina? But now, <laughs> what if there's a girl that doesn't require that? Maybe she has very low stamina, you know? And so in that instance, you know, him having great stamina and then having one woman who has you know an average level and then another woman who has an average level what if they partner up or what if their pairing allows them to all kind of flow and be cool to each his own i i i don't i don't play well <laughs> in the sandbox with other children <laughs> so we can't you know i mean if somebody because i understand basically what people would say is it takes the pressure off me to be this whole person for this other person but if you take the pressure off of you to be this whole person for anybody because you can't fill in their gaps right we have to get to the place where we're not allowing or, or asking people to fill in our our holes our holes have to be filled in with us so I think just me speaking that we, you know, some that's just being greedy. I, you know, I you know. think that, uh, do you hear an echo? Yeah. When you, I hear an echo when you speak, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe it's my mic. Let me. Uh, yeah, because, you know, I got me a new mic. I can't hear me now? I can't. Is the echo going? Real, that's real good. Okay, cool. I, I got like, you. I was trying to be fancy. I got me a new mic, but it ain't it ain't working out so good. But oh, but it was working out real good. The it's okay. So we all right. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I um I think like you said, mo there for the most part, I think people are being greedy. Um, and I think that it it's hard enough to maintain harmony in in a relationship with just two people. Right. And I think that um. You know, people who are looking for to to satiate themselves or satisfy themselves sexually with adding another person to the mix. I don't know. I I think it'll be that much more complicated. I can't help but to think that. So yeah, because because you got you got the thing is, and somebody's gonna be jealous. Somebody is going to find jealousy somewhere because they're gonna feel like they got one more second than somebody else got one more second than they did. Yeah, I wouldn't advise that, but um. At least, I don't know. I, I guess I, I kind of, I'm kind of dual minded on it from the standpoint that, on the one hand, I don't advise it, but on the other hand, I think that um, if people feel like that that's their truth and that's the way that works for them, you know. Yeah, if it works for you, I love it. If you like it, I love it, as the old folk used to say. Yeah. So, yeah. But, hey, if you want a polyamorous relationship, head over to Massachusetts in wherever their second city. They have two cities over there that would allow you to do so. But uh, stay out of Georgia, as uh, Desi says. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we cool in Georgia. We cool up in the GA. Stay out of there, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. So listen, y'all, let's move on in, into our topic today. We are going to talk about is the price of commitment too high, which is basically some of this. Right. Because your commitment may be two people. Is that your commitment? Is your commitment too high for the next person? Let's talk about that. Brother, what is your thoughts on this whole topic? Yeah. You know, I, I think we're in a society that encourages um, selfishness. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I think most people, when they get married, they're thinking about their own individual pleasure, what makes me happy, things along those lines. And, and marriage is really the ultimate compromise. Yes. Where you have to be a lot more selfless in order to enjoy um, some harmony. Now, that doesn't mean that, again, I, I use this definition for compromise, and I say that compromise isn't about losing, it's about 
understanding that the other person has just as much right to be happy about the outcome as you do. Right. So it's in that spirit that I say people tend to think that, okay, this commitment means that I have to compromise so much that I'm actually losing out. And, and I think that's where a lot of the problems and the misconceptions come in for the price with the idea that the price is too high. Right. Um, obviously there are some things that, you know, you won't be able to do, but I think, um, there are some things that you shouldn't want to do once you become married. Like what is the, where's the value in staying out to three and four o'clock in the morning on a given weekend when you got a husband or a wife at home? Right. You know, I, I get it. There are times where you want to hang with the girls or you want to hang with the boys, but I think we have to um, redefine what fun means in, in healthier ways that actually lend to healthy outcomes for the marriage. Right. And, and that's what the compromise is, I think, part of it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I think that you're, you're right about that. I I saw, uh, I posted, um, uh, when I posted the, the video or the show coming up, someone placed on the comments and said that there should be no sacrifice at all. And I was, you know, like, wow, because one, I know that person very well, but I won't mention who they are. Um, and I was thinking, how do you not sacrifice for a marriage? The entire, like you said, the entire premise of marriage is sacrificial. And when you, when you get into a marriage, um, where, or even a relationship that's headed towards that. Um, cause we talk about committed relationships, not relationships that are just hit and miss those ones that are fly by nights. We're talking about those people that are getting together for the ultimate, um, either are married or have ultimately decided that that's where they want to go. Um, and I think that people don't understand that it's going to take them not thinking about themselves and get into a selfless moment or moments, if you will, so that they can now give upon themselves. And a lot of people are not willing to do that because they don't recognize what that really means. Um, and so I, I have um, an issue when people take on more than they can chew, right? So, and that happens a lot where people are biting on, taking on more than they can actually handle because they thought that it was going to be easy, but you don't know what that requirements, what those requirements are of that other person, which is why you really have to have that conversation. And I'm of the, I'm of the school that, you know, we're going to have conversations up front that many people are afraid to have. Um, like, you know, what are you looking for down the road? And, and this, this is not going to be until you hit it, admit, you hit it and then you want to quit it or you get to the place where you say, oh, well, yeah, I want that too. But then you see what that really requires. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't take on or count the cost of the requirements of relationships. Yeah. 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 So, hey, Yarley, how you doing over there? He's over at the bakery making those donuts. Hey, Kimberly from Chicago. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to see you there. And we got James, brother James. How you doing? All right. All right. Um, Y'all is talking about black love is always cool, but others are afraid of the dark. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got Y'all. He always comes with the controversy, man. I love it. Yeah. They can move to Ida Garden too. <laughs> him and these garden tools for you all that don't know Yarley, y'all need to come and check him out because he is a part of this show right a resident <laughs> comedian resident right and uh so the way things are going in relationships that might be the future of society ah no we're not yeah we're not making that the future that's going to be the minimum part of the future Yardley. you want two women the practice of uh I can't pronounce that part of the word. What's the norm for that? Poly, say it again. Polyamory. Polyamory. Poly, polyamory. Yeah, it just means multiple loves. Right. It, it, it looks easier when it says poly. I can't even say it now. Poly, poly, I can't even say it now. Poly. Polyamorous. Yeah, same thing. It looks easier when you say polyamorous than yeah. polymory, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we don't want it to be the norm anymore, Yarley. The only price that is high is self-discipline, not commitment. If you have no discipline, you have no commitment. If you have no commitment, you don't have accountability. Very, very true, Yarley. And a lot of people don't have discipline. So, so when you, 
when you, what do you think are the causes, brother, that people feel like the price of commitment is too high for them? Uh, you know I, what? I think that most people don't understand the true purpose behind marriage. Yeah. And, and I think that what ends up happening as a result, because we don't have a society that encourages that in a way that um, is consistent with fruitful outcomes, right? We just, it's kind of like, you know, we, we, we find somebody that if we think they look nice enough and the sex is good enough, then we just, we think that we're going to have a lifelong friendship with somebody that is good to have sex with. And we just happen to love that person. Yeah. But but really, the institution of marriage is about building. Right. And, and so this is why the younger you are, in my mind anyway, the better, because like one of the things that I was just talking about with my wife, I think that we spared each other a lot of frustration and disappointment and pain from the game mm. because, because we came off the market so early. Right. So, so here we are at 18 years old. And most people don't encourage getting married that that young. Um, a lot of people say, well, a man shouldn't get married before he's 35. A woman shouldn't get married, blah, 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 whatever. Right. But the point that I'm making is by the time you reach that age. So let's just take the man, for instance, get the bag. Right. Get your career on track. Get everything set up financially. And then by that time, he's 35, 40, maybe even a little bit older. And then he wants somebody to love him for him, not for what he has. Right. But if you pull up in something and you're showing a young lady all these things, that's going to be part of the package deal. I mean, that's going to be more of the allure of, of or why she's attracted to you. And the same thing in reverse. Women you know, oftentimes are sacrificing um, their youth for the pursuit of that bag. So right. by the time she's 35 and she's a doctor and she's traveled and she's had all these hot girl summers, She's had a ball and now she's ready to, um, you know, she's ready for somebody. Oh, yeah. to right. but, but the reality, though, is that now she's become more um, independent. Yeah. Word I use. And so I think the older we get, the, the less flexible we are, the more rigid we become. And the harder it is, the more challenging it is to find um, harmony in a relationship. Mm -hmm. and so, again, I go back to. Um, I, I think that the misunderstanding of the uh, of what marriage is for is what creates all of these or so many of these other ideas and, and the subsequent difficulties in, in maintaining. What say you? Or relationships, you know, even even though the ultimate relationship is marriage, people forget what relationship is about. The first thing I always say this to my clients, that the design of relationships is to find out what's in you. So my thing is, if when you become a commitment folk, then and you're a person that does not want to commit or you find that commitment is the price is too high. I think that what you're really saying is the price of finding out who I am and looking at my flaws, having a mirror put up in front of me is too high. I don't want that because now you have to then face the fact that you're not responsible. You don't want the responsibility nor the accountability. You don't want somebody telling you uh, what you can and cannot do. So you want the freedom just to be who you are. And that's fine. Then you should say that you want to not be in relationship up front. Don't get people involved in the things and situations. And then now you're, you know, they are involved. And now you have to say, oh, I don't want this. So I think that that's really what they're saying. I don't like seeing myself and my flaws because it's making me feel inadequate. So I choose to back out and not be in relationship with you. Yeah. And so yeah. that's really what people are not paying attention to. They're thinking that, oh, well, I'm just I just don't want you. No, you don't want to see what you lack. Because we really, we really have to know that that's what we see. When a person comes to us and says to us, you know, in a relationship and you say, they say, well, you know what? Um, I don't like that you want to stay out till three o'clock in the morning. Well, why are you staying out to three o'clock in the morning? Do you have nothing else to do? Do you have a business that keeps you out that late? Do you um, do you just feel like you should just be free? Do you want to buck at the authority of the relationship? Because the relationships have authority. 
right? When you decide to commit to somebody, the commitment has the authority over how and how you govern your your bodies, how you govern yourselves with that other person. And a lot of people don't want that. They don't want that governing over them. They feel like that they just want to be free. And like you said earlier, when people get to the place where they're older and now they have set been set in their ways or used to doing things their own way, and now they're like, well, shoot, now you come along. Why are we doing this? Why do you have to now tell me what to do when I've been doing it all this time by myself, doing it this way? But you got to be willing to compromise and people are not willing to do that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I yeah. Go ahead. Now I was going to say, Yarly says, all those hot summer girls, phallic memory, go around rides and no accountability leads to a woman who doesn't want to be held accountable or responsible for themselves, their bodies and their actions. And that leads to detriment. It really does. You know, one thing that we've had a problem with in this society is that um, not just this society, but I think the world is, has promoted this idea that somehow men are more important than women, that men are more valuable than women. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's so nonsensical because I just think like you can't produce more men without women. <laughs> so so saying that men are more important than women to me is kind of like going getting an apple off the apple tree and saying that the apple is more important than the tree. Makes no sense, right? It, it, you know, they, they all they both have their own unique purposes. And, um, and so um, it, it's in that that spirit that I say. It's been encouraged in many instances that a man or male goes and sows his wild oats mm -hmm. while a woman remains chast. Right. And, right. And I, I don't know. I just maybe maybe I'm old fashioned, but I, I think that a more constructive way of dealing with it is for both people to remain chast and and pursue that way. Because, you know, it's the more experiences you have, I think the more challenging it is to find. um to be to be satiated with one person. Yes, because absolutely. You have, you have all these competing memories. You know, well, this girl did that. This guy was able to do that. You got all these different things going on. Whereas if you only knew one person, maybe a second person, if things went wrong or whatever, I think the lower the number of experiences or different people that you have, um, I think the the simpler it becomes to kind of settle in and I don't know and, and get along pretty good with one person. I think that you're right because it comes, it, it even comes out this way. It's kind of like when you become, you go to a job and you are now a manager and then you lose that job and now you are a, a just a regular employee. When you go into that situation, you're going to go into that situation trying to manage everybody because you're used to being in charge. So you're not going to come in uh, teachable. You're not going to come in coachable. You're not going to come in open and vulnerable to the situation. You're going to come in trying to control the situation and alter it and make it navigate the way that you want it to navigate. And when it doesn't do that, you back out. And so that's where the price of commitment then becomes too high because you're not willing to give where you need to give. And a lot of people don't realize that, uh, one, it ain't a whole, lot, a whole lot in these streets. So when you find somebody that you are compatible with enough to get along with and you have to work off some of the situations, then you should stick with that. And that's kind of the same thing. I mean, like, how do you how would you get married if if you can't even commit to relationship and then get married and then divorce and re breakup should not be on the table. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are so busy wanting their freedom. Like one of the things it talks about, this is, I got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 11, 11 things that show that the person is a commitment foe. And one of the things is they like you, but they like their freedom or their space more. So they're more committed to the freedom than they are committed to the person. And, and some of that has to do with their past. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. It does. We all have room to be as committed to themselves as they feel like they need to be. The problem comes in when you lie to other people. That's the truth. When you pretend to be of emotionally available when right. you pretend that you want to be in a long-term relationship or monogamous or even ultimately that you have ideas about being married when you pretend that 
only to turn around and and, and say, well, no, I, I wasn't as ready as I thought I was. Like that's you know, I it's this is this is rated G, so I, I'm not gonna say what I really think, but that's some BS. It's yeah, some BS. So right. Um, outside of that, you know, if you want to be selfish, then deal with other selfish people. Then I, I have no problem with that. If you right. want to have, you can have as many hot girl summers as you want. You can right. sell as many wild oats as you like, but there's enough people out here that have the same ideas that you have about that to the point where you don't have to spill over onto people who want something different from you and right. they're causing injury to those people. Right. Right. Because you're making a bigger pot. And, and and we we the one thing that people do not pay attention to, especially if you have children, what you do in your life will affect your children. It is it is the it's the laws of, of attraction is the laws of reaping and sowing. It's just how it is. We can't get around that. And, and, and I see that even in my own children with things I've done as a as a youth and the mistakes that I've made, how they're affected. And if you don't want your children to be affected the way that you're affecting other people, then stop doing what you're doing, right? Make better choices up front and be more upfront because there's people like you said that are out here that want exactly what you want. So um, one of the things that I see, you know, the, 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 two, the two major reasons is that they don't want the responsibility, accountability or the, of the relationship and they want more freedom, more freedom to do whatever they wanna do. And so, when do you think, brother, that this freedom should kind of slow down? Because, of course, you're in your 20s, you're in your even in your early 30s, you're kind of figuring some things out, you know, definitely in your teens where you're like, hey, I got to figure out life. I don't need nobody attaching themselves to me. Do you think that there's an age limit on when people should to should, you know, not have a problem with commitment? Or do you think that there's no age in that? You know, I, I think the um, it really comes down to w what rate a person matures at. Mm. So everybody doesn't mature at the same rate. So some people are, I use my own personal example. My wife has not changed a whole lot since the day I met her. Mm -hmm. You know, she was, I, I met her when she was 12, 13, mm -hmm. 12, 13. Mm -hmm. And as far as who she is at her core, she has not changed very much at all. Now she's gotten smarter, wiser, and all that other stuff, but she knew then what she wanted out of life. Yeah. And she has not wavered. Whereas it took me longer, a longer time before I was able to say, you know what, I want what you want. Yeah. So, now, so do you think, with that being said, do you think that there is a difference between women committing easier or more, more freely than men? No, I, I, you know, I think that, man, if you just look at the history of the, of the world and, and the challenges that women have faced, women have um, really been forced to commit earlier in life because they needed men mm -hmm. in a capacity that in many regards, they don't need men today. So yeah. just, just to sustain their livelihood, women needed men. Now women are able to make enough money where they don't need men for just for their basic sustenance. But of course, that also created a gap or a vacuum in a sense, a void is a better word, because mm -hmm. now we're figuring out, we're trying to figure out how should we relate because we don't need each other for the same things as much as we did a hundred years ago. Right. See, so here's a comment from uh, Kevin. He said, I'm at that age now with major accomplishments. It's harder now to find a great partner because most of them have been damaged or corrupted by the world. Then you realize why that lady is single. I should have started younger. Mm. So yeah. now Kevin is, is a friend of mine and we talk quite a bit. So Kevin is a younger man. He's, I think Kevin is mid thirties, mid to okay. mid thirties. And so that, that's kind of what I was talking about. He said, I wish I started younger and, and, to that, it's in that spirit that I say it's better, in my opinion, to grow with someone to establish the things that you want. Um, but everybody's not ready, and right. so you can get a young man or a young woman that you that you're planning to build with, but they don't know what they want out of life at 21. They're like, right. Who don't? And right. So th there's always risk. there's risk on the front end trying to get with somebody at a younger age, but then there's also risk on the back end when you've established yourself, you you've accumulated all these 
these these this money and now you're hoping that you can bring somebody into what you have and they don't want to just have a child with you and take you for half of it right you know so right it, it's it's tough and the thing i think that i think that you know as far as the whole building thing it's harder for somebody to come in and you to trust them even with them coming in after you've built so much so when you are younger and you're building together i i just i just recently told my daughter you know don't don't go into i gotta get them coins i gotta get that bag mode be open to relationships when they come to you just be discerning if this guy is the right guy for you to spend that much time with but going back to the survival part i think that if people pay attention that gives you i think that the the, the place that we're in gives you a little bit more sense of who the person really is. If, if, if we're dating and I don't need you for money, but I'm trying to spend time with you, then you know that I'm just there for you. But if, if you ain't got something and I'm still there or, or, or willing to leave, then you know I was only there for a superficial reason in the first place. So those types of things should show people how they're there for each other. So I think that the women not needing men in the sense is kind of what would show the man is this the woman that's that's as you say going to be inspiring going to be cooperative to his vision to be able to get him where he needs to be um so that kind of be a benefit and i don't think the men are, are paying attention to that um and with women where they because i know some women i, I actually had a, a woman that i i uh, did a discovery call with commitment phobe in the door and she was like not nah, uh-uh she didn't want it she don't want it she don't want it um, and it was because of the hurt. So most people are in this place of lacking the commitment where it feels like it's more than they really want to pay for because of the pain that they've been through. Yeah. <laughs> Yarly says uh, women, women will commit easier because they needed men to survive today. And today is not the case. Like you said earlier, he also said, Ke Kevin, maybe she was crazy. Maybe. <laughs> Could have been. All right, men can only build a family with woman. Yeah, very true. And a woman, if she's a single, if she's a single mother, she still got a family, right? Yeah, it, you know, it, it, because we don't have cultural mores and and folk ways and um, ideals that mm -hmm. usher us into what it means to coexist with the opposite sex. Yeah, we're out here just trying to figure it out, and much of our figuring it out is based on what we see people in Hollywood doing. Yeah, and they have yeah. relationship to relationship, and they yeah, even baby daddies and baby mamas in their wake, and and so we're taking too many cues from unhealthy people. Yeah, in in what it means to relate, I think I think that's a major problem too. So let's tap into that. You said unhealthy people. So do you think that? when you when a person is not able to commit that that deems them unhealthy or does that just deem them selfish which one do you think it has something to do with them having just too much baggage or do you think it's just simply a choice i don't think that there's a one answer fits all i think there are certainly people who are um, emotionally incapable yeah and, and then there are some people who are just emotionally unwilling and, and i think that um the, the courting process, the dating process is your opportunity to figure out what it is that you're dealing with. This is why um, sex at an early stage is a problem because it clouds your judgment. Yeah. It clouds your ability to rightfully discern what it is that you're dealing with. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, I, yeah, I think it, it, it depends on the person. And, and so we have to begin taking our time. I say, man and woman um that you really shouldn't have sex before the the period you should be able to first of all you got to decide what type of relationship you want right right if you want to be married cool so you should know whether or not this is the type of person th that this is the person that you want to be married to you should know that within six months mm -hmm. if, if you're serious about your life mm -hmm. so that means especially if you're young and and you really own it you really about that life you should have that figured out within six months and you should be engaged within six months and then the other six months if that's what you need should be spent planning the wedding you should be married inside of a year yeah 
And people have this idea that, oh, I have to get to know them. You're never going to fully know them 100% to the point of you thinking what you think, because they're going to be consistently evolving. And if they're not evolving, that's a problem. So you're going to still be getting to know them and getting to know them more and more, even after you say, I do, even after being together for three years, once you say, I do, something shifts in the spirit and you have a, dyna a totally different dynamic working over here. So what you thought you knew about this person you have now got a whole new person and people don't they don't really pay attention to oh no i'm not going to change you 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 change and it's not such a drastic change that it makes you feel um you know like oh my god what did i marry kind of thing but it's a, it's something it's very subtle but it, it it happens there's a shift that happens and people don't pay attention to that and not willing to put that up but my thing is this if you are willing to say that this is the person that you want to spend your time with then why like you said not go you know six months make that decision and then walk into it and work those things out as you go because that's what marriage is working things out as you go right so here's some of the reasons here's some of the signs that you can see if you happen to come upon somebody that is uh commitment has a commitment fold did i lose yvonne no I mean, like okay so you, they're unpredictable. They're only up for the chase. And once they get you, they're good, which means they kind of back off. Uh, they avoid serious conversations about how they feel. Um, so if you talk about something about their feelings, they switch the conversation. They avoid any type of attachment, even PDA. So if that person is kind and these are just I want to be very clear. I'm not saying these are etched in stone, but these are some of the things that you can look at when you are dealing with a person that has commitment uh, phobia. Um, they like you, but they are they really like their space more. So they are willing to put you out uh, of their space with in order for you to for them to like you. They give mixed signals. They take it very fast in the beginning. Um, they don't really express their feelings. They have a problem with doing that because they, when you, when they're expressing the feelings, they have to be held accountable for those. Remember, we talk about accountability here. Um, uh, it gets kind of awkward for them to express those feelings, and they are afraid of the next level because of the responsibility and what that looks like. What do you think about some of those, uh, those, those uh, signs, brother? Oh, I'm having technical over here. Sorry about that. I saw, I saw, I didn't want to, I was, I wanted to pause, but then I didn't want to stop. And then I want to pause, you know, you good though, right? Yeah, I'm solid. You're good. You're solid. Okay. So we talked about some of the signs, unpredictability, um, avoid serious conversations, uh, or they switch the conversation when you're talking about how they feel. Um, they like you, but they like their space more. They give mixed signals. They take it very fast in the beginning. They don't express feelings. Um, they avoid PDA. Um, and it gets kind of awkward and they're afraid of the next level. What do you think about some of those signs? Um, I, I said that it's not really something that you can etch in stone, but these are some of the signs upon me going into psychology today um, and pulling some of these things out. So if you, you all, these are not things I made up. These are things that psychologists have been able to look at studies and see that these are the signs that people actually are having issues with in actually committing. Yeah. Yeah. Yardley's yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, there's so many of us that need therapy. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm a huge advocate of of emotional health checks. Yeah. And, and making sure that we bring that we offer the best version, the healthiest version of ourselves to who it is that we're entering a relationship with. I think those were some very valid points. And of course, there are always exceptions. But I think the more of those boxes that get checked by a person, the more you should be paying attention. I mean, those are, those are some serious red flags. And um, yeah, I, I think it's right on point. Yeah. Right on. So if you if you see somebody um, that that is exhibiting those things, you might want to re rethink the entire situation and see if you want to move forward at your own risk. Because when you find somebody that has some of these things, and a lot of times we want, we don't want to peg people according to other people that we've been through or been with, but you really want to pay attention to those signs because if you don't, then you could end up in a situation long-term that you'll be miserable with, you know? So if you end up out of the situation early on, then that's a good thing because then you want to make sure that you stay, you know, stay good. Um, 
So I, I totally, I totally agree um, with everything that's on here. I've, I've encountered that myself. Um, so I know what that looks like. And it's not a pretty look when you end up on the outside of it going, what, what had happened, right? So really pay attention to the people that you are uh, spending your quality time with and, and ask a lot of questions. If people are not in position where they want to answer questions by you or they feel like they're being interrogated or they feel like it's something that they don't want to say, then you really have to look at that because a person that's really vulnerable to you, that's really open to you is willing at any cost to make sure that you are secure in the relationship and commitment takes that it takes that selflessness for you to for them to say or you know you to say that you know what i got you and i want you to know that i got you and in that you know we're going to make sure that this works out yeah, I yeah. Uh, it's under how valuable it is to meet the family and the friends of the person that you're you're trying to get involved with uh, because they'll reveal some things to you just through conversation they'll let you know whether the person that you're trying to have a relationship with is ready serious about relationships or if they have like they, and they may offer you think you know you might have to read between the lines right uh, but it's imperative that you pay attention to those things because and again sometimes they're wrong like i, I watched this show um everybody know about this married at first sight yeah and there's this young brother on there and his family and friends were saying, man, I, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're going to be able to do it. And he had played around so much that he was actually ready. So all they saw was the playful side of him, um, you know, wanting to, you know, he was going from girl to girl, I guess, or whatever. I don't know right. how, what his pattern was. But by the time he got to the show and they matched him with this young lady, he was ready. And they ended up having the best relationship out of the whole the best marriage out of the whole show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you're right. You can't really go by that. I, I've been in that situation where the family was, oh, I like her. I like her and all of these things. And then the whole thing just went dead. I mean, like flatline. And you're trying to figure out what had happened. Right. So it's, it's not necessarily that way, but you still have to be able to pay attention to all things that are involved. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yarley says, interrogate me, but understand, don't ask questions you don't want answers to. Very, very important. Um, I'm, I'm an advocate for that. I don't ask questions that I don't already think I know the answer for anyway. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, uh, one thing that I know that a lot of people have problems with is asking something like, how many sexual partners have you had? See, ain't nobody going to be asking them because look, Steve told, Harvey look. told people, told the women, don't say more than two. Yeah. Because men, men don't, we want to feel, you know, special. Like, like we unlock the code that very few men have been able to unlock. You know, I, I know that that's how I would be. I don't, right. you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to, I don't know. I, I, you don't want to go behind a whole lot of people. Right. And, uh, and so if your answer is 30, 40, you know, you might think, hey, I'm just living life. I'm doing what men do. Oh, okay. If that's how you see it, but understand that when, as a woman, if you're telling guys that you've been with 30 and 40 um, different men, your value is going to your value is going to plummet. You know, just went so. straight into the sea in the deepest end of it because it's like my question to you then is: Do women feel the same way? If a man came to you, if you asked him, you say you wouldn't ask him, but hypothetically, if a woman asked uh, a guy. How many partners he's had, and he says, "Well, I've been with fifty women." Then with she just gonna think that he got a whole lot of experience. <laughs> I <laughs> like, oh, we about to get it down. He about to show me some stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> I personally, I don't think that I would ever ask that because, as a woman, I you know because I know what my triggers would be. My triggers that, you know, again, I, I said this to my clients today, just because I'm a coach doesn't mean that I can't be triggered. That, that would bring out an insecurity. And I wouldn't want, you know, I don't feel like I'm that one that's, that's that swings from the chandeliers. I probably could learn how, but I don't swing from the chandeliers, right? You know, but I'm, I'm open to learning that, right? <laughs> so if, if I have a guy that's been with 50 women, I'm gonna be like, what if they taught you that maybe I don't know? So I don't want to know that. 
I don't want to know that. Keep that to yourself, bro. Just bring all the just bring all the tricks and treats, and we good, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and in terms of the biases in society, yeah. I don't know. But uh, at the end of the day, I know how most men think when it comes to this, and and typically, we don't want a woman that has a whole lot of notches on her belt. No, who wants that? I mean, like. The woman is the receiver, right? So every time she receives a man into her body, she's now carrying him into her body. I think we talked about this some shows ago about how you really do not pay attention to like I, I I had I had a relationship when I was younger with this one guy for two years, sex only, purely sex. We met on Wednesdays, we got it on, he left and went home. We didn't talk no more until next Wednesday. That's how it was for two entire years. We use a condom every single time. I never fell in love with him. Mm-hmm. I never had those feelings. One, I automatically knew what this was. I understood. We had an understanding, right? We get and we helping each other out. He's in school to be a doctor. I should have tried. No, I'm scared. But <laughs> you know, it's it's like we 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 got an understanding. But because we didn't swap juices, for lack of better terms, um, I never felt that. I never felt that longing for him. And I don't know if it's because we didn't get the whole. I don't know why. But I, I I know that whenever I would not use a condom with a man, that those feelings were like on fire instantly, like, oh my God, I need to have him kind of thing. And so when you when you get to that place, you don't really recognize that. And 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 I'm I'm sure that if women would sit down and think about that, were you really attached to a guy that you were consistently using a condom with? I wonder. I want any ladies that want to share. I would love to know if I was just not the only one. That's a <laughs> so so you're saying then basically that okay, Kimberly Snidey says, say it, sister. Coach Mille is my kind of truth. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, Ayana over here says, yes, I would never ask. And I don't care. Like Coach said, I be thinking he about to put it down. Yes. Go ahead, Ayana. (laughs) Desi over here says, if a man had been with 50 women, I would think he lacked commitment and was a rough, rough dog, rough, rough dog kind of brother. Absolutely. You know what? Y'all, get up out of my business every Wednesday. (laughs) I was 22. Don't I'm, I'm 50. That was a whole long time ago. 22. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I was I was yeah. At least I knew I was with one person. Now. Yeah. I wasn't out there, you know. So so here's a theory, right? Mm-hmm. The brain is one thing, the mind is something else. Yeah. Right? So the mind is the culmination of all your senses. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So taste, touch, et cetera, right? Feel, right. all that, right? right? Hearing, all that. So does a person then, if, if you're talking about this um, condom or not condom, right? Can you still develop a soul tie with someone, even if you use a condom, because they come, because they become a part of your mind's experience rather than just the physical juices that aren't being exchanged. You understand? Sure. What I, mean? I do. And I and I agree with you because he was one of the ones I had the Lord release me from these soul ties. I had to ask the Lord to release me from that too because just in case. Not that I was longing from him, you know, uh I still know his name. <laughs> So apparently, you know, I was going back every Wednesday for two for two years. So it was keeping me, it was, it was good enough to keep me coming back. But so I I, I still believe that that still does leave a soul tie. I, I do. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think people tend to underestimate um, just how powerful sex is. I mean, so most of the time we think it's just a nut. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Think it's a nut. And, and you know me, I'm a vegetarian for the most part, about 93 <laughs> percent. And, and so I eat a lot of fruit and nuts. Right. But I think when it comes to sex, most of us are just concerned about the nut without understanding what fruit that nut produces. Yeah. 
You see, yeah. and so that that fruit, what is what fruit is born out of that experience? Because it's always something born out of that experience. And I think we tend to underestimate that. We downplay that. We don't realize just how impactful those exchanges are. Yeah. Even with the lessons and that that's the fruit. What did you get from it? Uh, what came out of the situation? And if you walk away the same that you walked in and you're like, well, I ain't getting no lesson, but you're just mad. You didn't get you didn't get nothing. The whole thing was for naught. And I truly believe that everything in your life happens for a reason. Um, and it's a, it's about building characters, about building your integrity, about building who you are and your purpose and what you're what you're designed to do. So I, I know I always I always joke about I've been through as much as 10 women put together. Um, and if you can think of anything a woman has been through, I've probably been through it. So I, I recognize that many of the situations, although they don't feel good in the process, um, I've been through them so that I can still handle my, my purpose and they can be on point to, to, the, to the magnitude in which I believe that the father is trying to take me. Um, so we have to, you know, like you said, find out what that fruit is. What is the fruit of the situation and not just getting a nut because 15 minutes, an hour max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. especially yeah. when you get old like us. I mean, like, what is he doing? Yeah, back, back hurt. You, know? <laughs> you know, you're trying to figure out the knees cracking up and everything. You got to take blue pills and all that stuff. Yeah, I, you know, I, I will say this with with what I've learned just uh, in my life and just about the dynamics and the the, the sacred. This what it's supposed to be a sacred energy exchange. It is right. It is. If I had known then what I know now, I, I wish that my wife would have been the only person that I ever been with. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, you, there, there's so much energy in that exchange, especially in the release. And it's a there are bonding chemicals exchange. There's production taking place. And I think that um, there are forces at play, right? Here's mm -hmm. my temple hat, right? There are forces at play that are encouraging us to be more loose. Yes. And, and less concerned with how important sex is. You know, so you got your rapper singing, you know, popping bottles with bottles, different models every night, you know, things like that. And you have females even, you know, Jill Scott on stage, on stage you know, giving fellatio to uh, a microphone. Like, so yeah. sex, the, the most probably the single most important act that we can have exchange between two people has been reduced to a nut, a nut. right? And yeah. so you, there's no wonder why that you have people more concerned with getting the bag, right? Mm. And you got people who have more money than that, that can be spent in a lifetime by their, their successive generations and they're still miserable. Yes. Right. And so there has to be more. This is telling you that there has to be more to life than how much money I can make and how many women or how many men I can sleep with. Right. And I think that as you look, as, as you go back and you take a look at indigenous cultures around the planet, and even as you look at the black American experience, I think we experience greater levels of contentment and happiness and emotional health when we had less. We did. Yeah. Yeah. But people are so, so, so engulfed with getting the bag that that's all they see because they're looking at, you know, the, the Joneses or they're looking at the people at the next door and they're trying to figure out what we want, what they want. And you have no idea what they went through and the sacrifice that they had to make in order to get what they have. And you don't even know that. Um, and I'm talking about mental sacrifices, emotional sacrifices, physical sacrifices and financial sacrifices, because if if that person, you know, I, I love uh, back when I was a pastor's wife, they used to say, oh, girl, look at the pastor's wife, honey. You could tell how how that household is going to see if you see how that pastor's wife is smiling or if she's not. Is she over there looking like this? That house was a hell mess. Right. But if she come in and she on fire, you you thought that. But it wasn't necessarily true because we had to put faces on. We had to we had to talk to the people and shepherd the people. So it was faces that were put on. And a lot of people are doing that, putting these faces on like they're happy because they're getting the bag and getting the coins and they're really miserable. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, his first lady, their favorite mom says, I had a soul tie that wasn't sexual at all. Sex can be a shortcut to connection, but connection will happen with time. And, and how about this? I don't even think that it's a whole lot of time. I think when you begin to share your most intimate thoughts, that now, because that's, again, it's part of that mind that you said, uh, Coach Vaughn, that there, there's that, that soul part. So when you're connecting and intertwining your thoughts and your most deepest sentiments of the things that you've been through, you now have a soul tie. You don't even have to have sex to get that. Yep. Yeah, I agree. You know, you figure the, the, the soul is, I have never seen anybody that has been able to separate their soul from their body. No. Right. So right. it's all one unit. And we're experiencing each other um, in that time and space. And so, like, to your, to the point that you were just making, the, the deeper the truths that you share, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the more emotional the experiences are. Are we crying together? Are we laughing together? Like, there's a lot of things that can take place that can bond you to a person. Yes. And, and so the, the mission, though, I think, is to not bond to someone whose level of toxicity is so high that it becomes difficult to escape that person if things go bad. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there are people, there are people who will, will stalk you to work. Right. I mean, people yeah. that I, I've heard stories of, of, of women who enjoy meeting a guy at the bar and because that exchange, even without sex, because that exchange was so pleasant or seemingly so, so pleasant, yeah. All of a sudden, this guy is stalking her. You know, she's worried about, you know, coming and going. And yeah. she never even had sex with him. Yeah. I've been in that situation myself. Mm. Where I had, you know, a dude telling me that my lights are on. I see your lights are on. Why you want to answer the door? Wow. And or or you know driving past and you know, so uh so you know, you just pulled in, you're not gonna let me in. No. <laughs> so I, I completely I, and no sex. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's just it is it's deep. So let me ask you this. Do you think that what would you think it would have to be a real commitment situation, commitment phobia, or do you think it's lies when a person can connect, like you said, cry together, talk together, love, to, you know, all these things and the mental aspect of things together, and then they still fall away? What What do you think that is? You, look, there are a lot of unhealthy people out here, mm -hmm. and, and some of it is narcissism. Some of it is, you know, just pretending if that isn't part of what it means to be narcissistic. Right. There are a lot of different factors at play. And so uh, and some people just pretend for the for the ultimate um, for the purpose of accomplishing that goal. And maybe that goal is sex. Yeah. Um, or maybe the goal is getting what else they think you might have. Some people are energy vampires. Mm, that's good. You see. So I think that, again, um, to the point that his first lady just <clears throat> comment she says don't initiate or foster a bond you're not willing to to share accountability for and then above that she said and don't bond with anyone you don't want to commit to yeah. and so it's that spirit of discernment that you always speak about coach where you have to be able to you have to put your best effort forward to dis to discern whether or not you really want to engage in higher level thinking and higher level exchanges with this person that you're spending time with. Yeah, you're right. And like she, like she just said, they, they want the bond without the responsibility. And that is so very true. They want that. You know, I had a situation where, you know, okay, well, we, we don't want the relationship, but can we still kick it and hang out and do business? No, we can't do anything because what is the point of me? I, I'm, you know, I'm in a place where we don't, we don't need to spend any time together if we're not going to be spending time together. Right. You know, and not to be mean, but I spend my time with the person that I'm going to be spending my time with. And if that doesn't come at, with the same person, I can't split my time between two people. Um, and he said a lack of communication, respect, honor and integrity. And I ran into those energy vampires. Yeah, it's, it's really sad, though, um, that people are in that place, especially when you get older. You know, I can see it in your 20s. 
you're figuring some things out, you're trying to figure those things out, especially based off of what we've taught in our communities, in our community as uh, as a whole, that you know, you go get you get you a good education, get you a good job, and then you settle down, as opposed to in other communities, they have been taught that you do all of that at once. You don't separate the three, right? You do them all at once because they're ultimately going to help you get to where you're really trying to get in the first place. And a lot of people are not paying attention to that. It takes two. Two are better than one. Kimberly, Kimberly Stein, by the time the right one comes along, we have no fears for him or her because we gave it all to those before time. And that is why we need to be with one person and one person only. Look, um, this is a very common thing with men. And I, it even it's not uncommon with women, but I think less so. But um, there are times, look, I was, I should have shared this video to the group. I'm gonna share this video um, in, in the group and I'm gonna share it on his and her perspective page too. Speaking of that, let me quickly, uh, if you're looking at us right now, make sure that you're doing a watch party, uh, share, share, share. Uh, make sure that you go over to his and her perspective group um, so that you can get the link that Vaughn will be sharing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no worries, thank you for that. Um, there's this, this, this couple that had broken up some, you know, after um, they, they had a good relationship, real strong chemistry. He cheated. He thought she was cheating and they broke up. Mm -hmm. But the chemistry was I mean, it, it was really, really good. And so they hadn't seen each other for several years. And, and then they came together for this interview on camera. So mm -hmm. they're, they're <coughs> sitting down face to face for the first time in several years. And, and the, the energy between them, I mean, you could feel it, that, mm -hmm. that they must have enjoyed some really great chemistry while they were together. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, they weren't, they weren't emotionally ready mm -hmm. to see each other, even though they enjoyed what they enjoyed. And so what I think, what it sounds like to me is that they undervalued or didn't appreciate the gift that they had before them. Mm -hmm. So what often happens is, as men, let's just say from a male perspective, we meet women along the way. And, and sometimes we, we have a great exchange with this person. But in our mind, we're not ready. Right. Uh, maybe we're not financially stable enough in our mind or, or, you know, whatever the reasons might be. And so we take for granted that these opportunities will be present for us a year from now when we're ready. Five years yeah. from now when we're ready. Plenty of fish in the sea. Right. We have these ideas. I know a young lady who did the same thing. She was in college, she had a guy that was crazy about her. And, and she was crazy about him, but she still had that itch that she thought needed to be scratched. Yeah. Hot girl summer, right? Yeah. And yeah. so um, she got caught, broke it off. They He broke it off. He was so heartbroken. And here she is. She's my age, and she has not been able to replace what she had in him since then. So what I'm saying is in the sense that uh, I think each of us in this lifetime are presented with an option to really experience a, a very healthy and very high level of um, harmony with, with our masculine or feminine counterpart. And we it, it's not encouraged for us to understand the importance of that type of uh, that type of finding. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so um, experts have estimated that as much as 95%, listen to this now, listen to this family, as much as 95% of our overall happiness can be attributed to how well we do in our intimate relationship. Yeah. That, that's huge. That's huge. And then you find it and you say, well, you know, for whatever reason you dismiss it, maybe her booty ain't big enough. <laughs> Maybe she ain't shaped like you know you wanted her to be shaped, or or maybe you wanted the guy that was eight inches and he only had six and a half, seven inches. Whatever it is, like we're dismissing very important relationships for some very trivial reasons, and we're paying for it. We're suffering, and then we're also our children are suffering for the same thing. Yeah. And then we don't want to take accountability for the fact that we let that we there's a person that we let go or we messed up with or any things of that sort. So we need to man, it's just it's sad. It's yeah, really man. sad. Um, uh, Yarly says uh, the truth is never mean. It's not. Yeah, he said he can agree with what you said. You said what now? 
I don't know that I agree with that. I think the truth can be me. I, I, I think when you you hear people all the time say, well, I'm just brutally honest. Now, that's true. I, I agree with that. Because right. if you're just being brutally honest and you're not paying attention to how it's going to affect somebody else, then yeah, I do agree with that. Truth without compassion is cruelty. Yeah. And so if you're trying to enjoy a harmonious relationship, there is no room for brutal honesty. Yeah. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it. How you say it. Absolutely. So I can change a truth with my wife in a way that can hurt her feelings or in a way that can heal the divide that might exist between us. It can be the same truth. Delivery is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it really, it really tapped, it really comes down to is that person really available mentally? Um, if they're dealing with some things that they've not overcome then you need to find those things out in the door so that you can know that, okay, now I'm making the decision to let me back off of this because it's not going to be good down the line. Um, and so when you do that, you save yourself from some heartache that could have lasted a lot longer. You could have been tied to it um, in marriage. And then now you're stuck for lack of better terms. So, to come through, right? <laughs> so it says the longer a person believes a lie, the more the truth will hurt. And how about this? When you lie, you got to keep telling that lie over and over and over again. You only have to tell the truth once. If, if your truth hurt, hurts, you are living a lie. Yeah. 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 I think so. But very again, so. I think, again, I think that delivery is very important. And some people are very... Look, some people are tacky as hell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't have to be tacky just because you're being truthful. Yeah, you don't. You don't have to be hurtful. You you can just, I mean, the thing is, is that people feel like it takes work for them to figure out how to say something, if you will. Um, and they would rather just go ahead and get it out. I used to be like that. I used to be like, I'm going to just say what I say and I don't care how you take it. It is what it is. I'm just, I'm being honest. And that was not conducive to healthy relationships. I don't care who it is, even with my children. I'm like, we gonna do it. And this is what I said. I said what I said. You know, but that's not the way to live because that thing, that thing will backfire on you and come back at you, and you'll be trying to figure out why. And it may not necessarily be with that particular person. But again, you then you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Those cycles do come around. I have uh -oh. the impulses. Right. right. And I don't bite my tongue very much. Uh, and, and so me being impulsive, me being unwilling to bite my tongue, unwilling to um, hide my truth, whatever I thought that truth might be. Um, my And a couple with my wife being the very sensitive type, it was causing problems in our marriage because I wasn't being um, mindful. Right how I was speaking to her. And so mm -hmm. I had to make a decision. Either I'm going to continue sharing my truth at the expense of my relationship, or can I repackage that truth in a way that's more palatable for her, right? So I still get my truth off my chest, but I say it in a way that actually benefits the marriage rather than creating problems in a marriage. Right. And these are still all the prices of commitment that you, when you're committed to someone, you have to, you know, step back. You don't get to just do and say whatever you want to do and say. There's a responsibility. There's an accountability. There is something that you must give in order to get what you're trying to get. And if you just want to take, 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 you know, even like I, I tell uh, people all the time, if, if if I meet a guy and he don't, and he's not into what I'm doing, but I'm into what he's doing, we got a problem. Right. You can't you can't want me to dive into what you're doing and you're not willing to dive in what I'm doing. You know, and it's not that, you know, especially if you got two people that are entrepreneurs, you're going to find that, you know, some you're not going to be able to dive, dive, but they should be interested. And so those are all things that, that, that come with the responsibility or come with the price of commitment. What are you committing to? You know, if a person like you already said earlier can't commit to you, they they lack discipline, and it's probably they're gonna lack discipline in many other areas of their lives. Financially, their their credit probably jacked up, their money probably jacked up, they everything in their lives is probably jacked up because they can't commit to a person. 
And if they can't commit to the person that's standing in front of them, they probably can't commit to paying bills on time. They probably can't commit to all these different things. So then you you have a bigger situation on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, and just going back to what you said a minute ago, people want to do what they want to do and they want to say what they want to say. I'm thinking that when you're committed to somebody, what you want to do and what you want to say fits the narrative of being committed to that person. So it's not just a matter of, in other words, if you're committed to, if, if you're committed to somebody, then what you want to do fits the desired outcome of remaining in relationship with that person. Exactly. You should just automatic. It should just be automatic. It should not be something you have to think about. Yeah. Because because your whole thought process is is how can I please this person? How can I make this person feel good? How can I do the best of me? Give the best of me to this person, and that's going to automatically get you to thinking of what you can do to do that. And so it yeah. won't even cost you anything because it'll be it'll be unbegrudgingly. When you start counting up what you've done, and you start counting up how many times you did it, and 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 I did this for you. You ain't doing it because you really want to do it. You're doing it because you want to you want to be able to get the tallies on. You you need the you need the affirmation of what you can do. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Ty says, uh, well, Kimberly, before that, she says this is great content, YouTube. Thank you, Kim, for that. Thank you so much, Kim. We appreciate you. Ty says, uh, if every partner told each other the truth, everything would be over. Ha 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 ha. No, no, you just have to, you have to know how, you know what, this is what I believe, effective communication must be safe, y'all know I love acronyms, and for those who don't, I am an acronym person, I think that you put a lot of power in one word when you use it as an acronym, effective communication should all be, always be safe, S-A-F-E, it should uh, show your heart, it should allow for different perspectives of each other, it should I'm sorry, it should show empathy, allow for different perspectives of each other, follow your heart and elevate the positive and not the negative. When you can do that, you should be able to be free, free to be able to share without worrying about or being defensive if this person's coming for you. Because if a person is coming for you, then you don't trust them. You don't trust that they have their best interest at heart. And if you don't have their best, if you don't think that they have your best interest at heart, what are you doing? You got to be able to trust that person has your best interest at heart, that if they say something to you that doesn't quite feel good, that it's for your benefit and not for your detriment. And if you don't feel safe communicating with a person that you are in relationship with, you need to sit down with a coach, with a therapist, with somebody to say, hey, how can I fix this? Because it's not going to last. It's not. Okay. He He says... So let's say I see a girl with a big butt at the mall while I'm with my girl. Should I tell her the truth and say, damn, she got a fat ass? Ha, 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 ha. Now, it depends on that on that party. For one thing, let me tell you this, because in my third marriage, we did that. Oh, hey, ain't she cute? Yeah, she got a, she, man, her, she got perky ones, right? We talked about that stuff, but it also opens doors that we weren't ready to deal with. So if you if you want that type of conversation with your with your girl and then she start looking at girls. Mm. Or what if you checking out girls butts? What if she start telling you, man, he looked like he hung like a horse. Can you handle that? You don't want to open doors that you ain't ready to walk through. So cool. and you have to know that that that. One, we have to know that there's life and death in the tongue. There's power in words and how you speak to your partner, right? So when you begin to speak those types of things, what's happening in the spirit realm that you don't see that is more that's more powerful than what you're looking at right now, even as beautiful faces, you are opening doors. You th- them doors like cracked open, stay open because we're gonna need this door. Yeah. Let me walk through that lady. You may not never walk through it right now, but later on down the line, you're going to be trying to feel that. You're going to be like, where is that wind coming from? You done felt it. You done felt the breeze coming through because you opened the door that you wasn't ready for. And so you got to be very careful about that. It, it is. It, I won't say it's on a need to know basis, but what would be the point? So when you when you're having a conversation with your significant other, there should be um, there should be a reason why you're saying certain things either to ben and mostly to benefit 
So there should never be anything that you say to your partner that's going to be having. Uh, that's going to be for a negative reason. If it is not beneficial to the relationship, it is negative to the relationship and it should not be said. So you have to stop and think. You know, I always tell people when you're in a place where you're confused about what to say, what to do, be a star. Again, as though my acronym, stop, think, assess, respond and not react. Reacting would be, oh, she got a big butt. Me telling my girl that is going to do what? Is it going to grow her butt? Is it going to make her look at it and, and we want a threesome? What's your motive in the whole thing? And if your motive does not benefit and elevate the relationship, then you shouldn't say it. You shouldn't even be thinking it. Yep. Yeah, I, I like to say, look, there, who is it that says nothing in the universe is ultimately ever at rest? It's either growing or it's decaying. Yeah. Right. It's either growing or it's dying. And I say the same thing about. To your point, whatever you're saying, whatever you're speaking into your relationship, either you're speaking life into your relationship or you're speaking the death of your relationship. And so like like what you just said, by telling your wife or your woman that another woman has X, Y, Z, are you affirming something into your relationship that makes your woman feel good, that, that somehow builds what you have, or does it destroy what you have? Yeah. If your woman has low self-esteem, and you're constantly pointing out another woman's favorable attributes. What you're doing is you're speaking salt into the wound of your relationship. Yes. Right. But it can still be true just because it's true. Don't mean you have to say it Yeah. because her butt might be nicer than your lady's butt. Doesn't mean you have to say it. Yeah. You, you see it and you keep it moving. Keep I it moving. It. Kim says, um, she says, hell no, it ain't about being insecure. It's about the respect. I treat people how I want to be treated, relationship or not. And then she says, what if I say, hey, baby, that man is packing. Exactly, coach. What is the reason? So there it is. There's no reason for that. Because this is the thing. Re communication is, is, is very much the same way you feed your body. If all you put in your body is junk, you're going to be overweight, you're going to be unhealthy, and you're going to die early. If you're feeding your relationship unhealthy things, it's going to be full of chaos, it's going to be unhealthy, and it's going to end early. It might, it might, it might last long. You know, there's a lot of people that live to see 75 and 80, but they're on all kinds of medication. So your relationship can drag on. It can play out for decades, and it can be a living hell. It can be hell. a miserable existence. And People be saying stuff like, oh, we've been together 30 years. We've been together 40 years, but the relationship is garbage. Yeah. You see? And what's that? That's not, that's not abundant living. Who wants to live like that? Who wants to be in that position where they're living half halfway yeah. or half? You just walk, like, like walking around. You got two eyes, but you're only using one. You got two hands, but you're only using one. You got one leg, but you two legs, but you're only use, using one. What's that? I mean, like, for what? When something good happens in your life, one of the first things you want to do is what? Tell, Tell somebody. somebody. Right? The purpose of having a relationship is to heighten the human experience. Yes. Right? It's supposed to make life better. Yes. If you are doing things that damage your ability to make life better, you're defeating the purpose of the relationship. Yep. All of that. You're defeating the purpose of why you're here. Hmm. And so when you think of it that way, if, 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 if I'm bringing all this toxicity into my life because I'm with multiple people, I can't decide and commit to one person so that I can heighten the experience, as Coach Vaughn says, what am I doing to my experience? Is it is it just going to be good for you to somebody to read your obituary and go, oh, yeah, they've been with fifty people? What's that? You you're not even going to tell most most people are not going to walk around. If we had to walk around with shirts on, where or there's this there's this uh, there's this uh, show called Mirror Mirror, and it's kind of like this conglomerate of different shows, and 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 one of the shows named. Um, Oh, shoot. I can't think of y'all look up mirror mirror. There's one show on there and they talk and they do this in China, actually, for real, where they have these social, these social um, uh, things where they give scores. 
So they have these social scores and they're walking around with their cell phones and they're giving each other scores and they hear ding, 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 ding. So if we walked around with this highlight of I've been with 50 men, I've been with 100 women, I've been with. If you don't want to explain it to the world, then you shouldn't want to live it. Mm. Wow. Heavy. So we've been on here uh, uh, 85 minutes, right? Doing the thing. Let's talk about it. So Yali says, if my woman brings to my attention, she noticed females be- be- bodies before I noticed. Yeah, you should be suspect. Definitely. Because that's probably it. But that I was, I was following suit from my ex. Um, and uh, his first lady said that she'd like to say, thank you so much. I love acronyms. Y'all keep up with me. I got a lot of them that can help you with some real serious things in your life. Um, and speaking of that, you know, we always talk about we're here to help. You know, we are here because we do this every Sunday. We're not charging anything for anything. However, we do have a um, a show. I mean, a, a master class is going to be coming up that we will be doing um, the third week of April. Was that brother? The third week of April. Um, and we're going to be dealing with some really good stuff that women are going to need because we're going to have it's going to be two days. Uh, we're going to have uh, one day will be for the, the ladies and one day will be for the guys that we're going to be able to share some really good stuff that has been downloaded to us that we really think that our viewers, as well as a lot of people, we're going to know. We're going to be dropping the link for that this coming week so that people can start to register. It will cost you. Uh, what did we say? Forty-seven dollars. Forty-seven dollars for just forty-seven dollars for you to get some really good information that's going to be very beneficial to you if you are single and you are wanting to to find the right person and to eliminate that that mess. You know, stop wasting your time with Mr. Wrong so that you can learn how to use your superpower and be able to activate it. Because a lot of people think that they know what their superpower is. And y'all don't really know, but we need to teach you how to activate that thing so that you can get attached to and connect to Mr. Right so that you can now have the relationship and, 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 and real seal the deal. So when you get to that place, it's going to keep you from from the heartache and pain that that you would have had uh, access to when you were younger. But now that you've you know got some notches on your belt, had some relationships, had some heartaches and pains, we're going to show you how to erase some of those things so that you can drop that baggage and keep it gone for good. Teach you some keys and strategies that's going to help you live a more healthy life so that you can now attract more healthy people. And it, it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. You all really, I'm telling you, share this information when you see it pop up on our uh, on our pages. If you're not following us, please make sure that you're following us. Bond the Love Alchemist over on Facebook, um, Instagram, as well as YouTube, as well as Coach Michelle Monet on all social media platforms. Um, make sure that you're following us so that you can get access to this this link to sign up for this. It's going to be power packed. Yep. Power yeah. Pack 90 minute master class is going to teach you some really good stuff that you've not heard before. This is not something that you're going to get from anybody else because we the ones who came up with it. We are the uh, we're the ones who, who uh, this has been downloaded to us to be able to give you this information. So please make sure that you're sharing that information because we're here to help. But we also know that there's going to be some things that we really need to dig into. And us being on here, just kind of giving conversation, uh, we're going to you can take some notes is not enough. So we want to do that and really give you some things that you can walk away with. Um, yeah, be an class too. Yes. Um, as we as we share um, our information, you'll be able to um, ask us questions so that we can go deeper on in areas that you feel need more attention. So, yeah, th- this is going to be good. And, and there's a question here. His first lady says, will there be anything for married people in the future? We are actually going to do a married um, master class or a couple of uh, uh, cl- a master class for married couples or just couples in general right after that so yes the the answer is yes yes absolutely we were definitely doing that we feel that we figured we have a lot of single followers um and we want to be able to do both and we couldn't put them all in one because we know that the dynamics are totally different um and i think it's a show like that called black mirror yeah it is black mirror uh 
is it? I think it is Netflix. Yeah, Black Mirror. It's really it's check them out. They have a couple of different things on there that are really good. Um, uh, one one dealing with commitment, really. Um, and the name of that one was called um, Kill the DJ. And weird, really weird. They come up with these really weird uh, titles that have nothing to do with really what's happening. But check that one out. The one with the with the social thing, and then the kill the DJ is a really good one too. Um, Yarly says that um, I wonder twin power masculinity. Um, that that's, that scratches that scratches. It does. That's not the whole thing. It's not. See, I, I like that. I like that he said that because, I, boy, I, can, I can't wait to go in on that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I yeah. hope that y'all are able, especially my single folk. And, and we need, look, if you know somebody young, young people really need what we're about to share. It's rated G. I know sometimes I, I get a little excited and I might slip in a cuss word here or there while we're on this platform. But everything that I say will be rated at least PG. Um when we when we do this master class so if you know some young folk make sure you uh spread this word to them and get them in this class because we got to start doing things that heal um heal is such a i don't know such a overly used cliche kind of word but we got to start doing things to advance out to advance our cause much earlier than trying to figure it out at age 40 45 and so on yeah. we're waiting way too late in the game to get these things on point so um yeah, spread the word, family. We, we, we we'll be in touch. We we should have something for y'all, like like Coach Michelle said this week. So stay. yeah, yeah, and definitely with uh, with his first lady, uh, the married couple. It don't it won't be PG, okay? Because we're gonna be de- <laughs> we gonna be dealing with some stuff um, that 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 the the married folk really need to deal with, and we're gonna be talking about some stuff that people are not. I'm telling you, the, the stuff that has been downloaded between Coach Vaughn and myself, um, the dynamics of how um, how we are, you know, him having this this dynamic of this great experience and then me not so much in some of the areas. But I've had so many hard learned lessons that have been downloaded to me. And I believe that it's for the purpose of being able to share and help people, as Coach Vaughn says, heal. Um, you know, so I've been your your escape. Uh, what, what do they call it? Guinea pig. I'm kind of a guinea pig, right, of going through some of the things that a lot of people don't need to go through because I'm going to share with you what not to do. I'm going to share with you how to make sure that you secure the relationship. And he's going to show you from the other end and as well as because he still has we, we still both have these dynamics in the both of us. But we just come together as a superpower pack thing. So I'm telling y'all, we need these lessons, just like for his first lady just said, we do. Yeah, yeah. we are not being taught this, y'all. Yep. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going about it on our own, trying to stumble over things, figuring it out. And that's why we have a we the black community has a higher divorce rate than the divorce rate. Our divorce rate is something like 62 percent when the divorce rate is something and it's low. It's going down in the in as far as the overall. But ours hasn't gone down. It's still 62 percent. And, and the man. divorce rate is something like 50 something. And we're not getting married. At the rate that other groups are. So our nope. rate is higher, and we're not getting married at the rate that other groups are. And we're producing children still, even in during this process. So what's happening is we're turning out higher and higher levels of dysfunction. You know what that translates to? Extinction. Extinction. Now I know that's a that's a hard word, and a lot of people don't want to deal with that. But that's exactly what we're 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 about to be relegated to. Uh, really fourth place citizens in this country. And if, For real. And if we don't, it, we got to get it together quick. I'll just say that. And if and if we try, we, we drop nuggets where we need to drop them. Y'all need to really pay attention to that. Yeah. It's, 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 we, it's, it's only about 13 to 14% of us. Yeah. We don't have a lot of us in the beginning, right? In America. We don't know who we are. And since we don't know who we are, we don't protect who we are. You can't protect something when you when you lose when you lose the purpose of that thing when you lose the true identity of that thing abuse is inevitable. It's like if you had a chair and you didn't know the purpose of it was to sit down, you're going to stand on it. You're not going to treat it right, you're not going to do right by it. But when you when you get situations like coach Vaughn and myself were doing these master classes and doing these sessions every Sunday, 
you you please understand that we're we're teaching from the heart of us trying to be stronger as a unified community and in order for us to be healthy and to produce healthy people we have to have these types of lessons we have to have these conversations things that people are afraid to talk about i mean either they're afraid to talk about it or they come in and we this and we power to the people and we're going to kill all it it don't even have to be like that let's yeah. learn how to secure us yeah. we don't have to hate everybody to secure us you know we don't have to walk around and and do just let's let's unify us. Let's let's do what we need to do to us to keep us from ex extinguishing ourselves because that's exactly what's happening. We're already dying because at the hands of authority that shouldn't be killing us, and then we're killing ourselves, and then we're not producing. We're not reproducing. We were the chosen ones that were supposed to reproduce. And I'm sorry, I don't went on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Man. That um, we we enjoyed. This goes and you know it's easy for us to go two hours we could go even longer um because we enjoy doing this so much look at the at the end of the day there's a lot that we got to do right and it has to be done we're going to do this master class and if you're able to get there you need to do that um and, and th there's there's different levels that things need to be done on uh but at the end of the day like nike says just do it um, and, and I and I end with this. I, I say that all you can do is all you can do, and that's enough. But we need to make sure that we're doing all that we can do. We love y'all, fam. Thank y'all for joining us. Peace. Bye. Oh, hold on. I forgot the, our thing. Hold on. I love our thing. Hold on. Hold on. Here you go. Here you go. That's it, right?